If you are looking to explore the science topic of flying creatures or dipping your toes into the water of Apologia's Young Explorer series, you're gonna to wanna to check out today's video because today I'm sharing my first impressions of the Zoology One curriculum from Apologia Science. I've actually done this curriculum before, but in a previous edition. So today I'm going to share with you guys what I think of this curriculum, give you a little peek inside and point out a few of the differences or similarities that you might find if you have an older edition copy. So let's get started. The first thing that you should note is that this is book one in the zoology series. So obviously zoology is studying animals and zoology one covers flying creatures. That does not mean just birds, I should say but it does include all flying creatures. It includes bats and butterflies and birds and so much more. What I love about these zoology books is that they cover them based on the days of creation. So it's zoology one, flying creatures of the fifth day. Zoology two is what we just completed this year, and that is covering swimming creatures of the fifth day. And then zoology three is covering land animals, and they just released the new edition of that book. So if you're interested in any of those, check those out. People frequently ask me if you have to do these in order and the answer is no we actually did zoology one as our very first year of science with apologia many 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 moons ago over well over a decade ago with my older kids and we are now going back through it with my younger ones because they were too little or weren't born yet to remember um but we actually started this time around with zoology three land animals then did zoology two now doing zoology one there are concepts within each of these books that do build on each other but if you haven't previously read the original books they will still review or reference what they're talking about so you won't be lost all you need for this curriculum is the textbook this is all the material that is required although they do also have the student notebooking journal which I'll tell you more about here in just a second you can actually get the textbook in the hardback cover that I have here you can get it on audio and you can get it as an ebook version I actually like to have at least two, if not all three of those versions, because we use them in slightly different ways. Just like many of the zoology books, you're going to notice that there are 14 different lessons. Each lesson is designed to be done over a two week period. So this will take you through the entire year. Or if you wanted to cover more material in a smaller period of time, you could do one of these per semester, but it would definitely be more intense. It's designed to be done two days a week and it has all sorts of great topics here. So what is zoology? This is going through butterflies and friends, supremely social animals, bees. Um, you've got beetles, filthy flies, and bona fide bugs. You've got insects, all sorts of different things, fascinating feathered animals, and more. So I always say when people ask, well, how do you spend so much time dealing with one topic? You're not really dealing with one topic. You're dealing with a category and lots of little mini almost unit studies in between. What I'm instantly drawn to with this newer version is all of the beautiful pictures. The old version is definitely more outdated when it comes to the pictures and the diagrams. So I love that. I love that it's easier to read because things are broken up more simply. Um, and they've got these extra fun activities that were not in the original book. So like here is a nature scavenger hunt that you're going to go on. You're learning about animal classifications, but you've got amazing pictures to help illustrate that. This is great for your visual learners. Um, and I love that element that was not in the original book as well. You've got fun, different activities. You can do all of these or you can do some of these. We usually pick at least two to do per, per chapter, and sometimes we do more depending on the season, but I love the fact that there's lots of opportunities um, that you can utilize throughout your year, and this works great in a co-op setting. It's actually how we've used it for many years. It also has these great breaking points where it encourages you to explain to someone what you have learned thus far, which I find to be really helpful kind of breaking up stopping points for your kids. And it has great things like thinking about sections where it gets a little bit deeper thinking about different topics. It also has something that you probably have seen in other, um, that you've seen in the Young Explorer series, and that is the what do you remember sections. This what do you remember section 
ask different questions to help check understanding. And then in the back of the book, in the appendix, you will actually find the answer key to those different what you remember sections so you can check for understanding. One of the reasons that I mentioned the um, the ebook version of the textbook, which we are getting this year as well, is because I actually plan to read the physical book, but show the ebook version on our TV screen. You could definitely just get the ebook version if you want. I just like to have it in different mediums. Um, and because I want my kids to be able to see and experience all of the different visuals that are involved, you can definitely do this by stopping and showing the different pictures or if you have smaller kids um, or less kids I have seen people where they'll do the audiobook version playing while the kids follow along and that's another great way to do it but I just like the option to have ways to mix up the learning when it comes to these things just like in all of the other zoology books you'll have a year-long activity which you can choose to do or not do we've done them some years and other years we've passed on it but this one you're gonna be making a mobile zoo so at the end of each chapter you'll be creating or crafting a different animal, insect, bird, whatever it might be that goes along with that particular lesson to include in your sort of final project. We've actually done this through a variety of ways. They have ways that you can physically create these things. They did the same thing in zoology too. Um, but we've also done it through things like Minecraft or having my kids sketch the different items. So there's lots of different ways that you can incorporate those year long projects if you want, or you can just stick with doing the separate individual activities or experiments within your book. As far as the journals go, from my understanding, they are actually shifting away from doing junior notebooks and the regular student notebooks. You can get them sometimes for some of the other editions, but for anything new that they're coming out with, they have one singular notebook, which I actually really, really love. It has a suggested weekly schedule at the beginning, so it gives you an idea of how to break it out. If you're doing it two days a week, you're gonna do, you're gonna read these books in the textbook, you're gonna do this activity, and you're gonna do the student Student journal page 26 and 27 and so on and so forth and it's got great check boxes so actually use this to help us keep track of where we're at within the lessons then you have different fun activities that your kids can do and the reason I like the fact that they've combined this and they're not doing the two different levels is it's kind of got the best of both worlds it still has the coloring pages because a lot of my older kids really enjoyed being able to color the pages as well and it's got the place where you can take notes as you listen and fun activities. It's got some of the word searches. So you're not gonna use every single one of these elements within your year. That would be probably quite a bit of work to do, but it's got different fun activities that you can do with your child. And for every experiment that they suggest in the book, it has a page where you can write down your observations um, and what you think is gonna happen and what actually happens, which I find is really helpful to prepare your kids for the older textbooks, where they definitely have to do a lot of this as a requirement as part of that course. So I would really encourage you, if you have older kids, make them do these sections. If you have younger ones, maybe just stick with the coloring pages and the note sections. I always require my girls every time that we sit down and we read to write down at least one fun fact or ask for help to write down one fun fact that they've learned from that time of reading. And then you've got fun things like here, you're gonna be matching up the different animals to their habitat. You're gonna be spotting the camouflage. This is another great way to give your kids access to those visuals. You've got creating your own word search. Oh, my daughter's going to love that because she's all about that. <laughs> and then those what do you remember questions that I showed you in the book, they actually have them written out here. So you can have your child write out the answers if you want. And if you wanted to test your child, you could even use this like a test or just a gauge to see what their understanding of that is. I think we're going to do a little bit more of that with my older one this year as we kind of prep her for the later um, the later lessons and whatnot. You've got fun little lap books here. You're going to be working on understanding classification. And so they're gonna be making this fun little flip book that has the different categories in here that'll help them to understand how that all goes together. There was another place where you're gonna create your own mnemonic device. So lots of just neat things. Absolutely love the student journal. I've done it a lot of different ways. I've done it where each of my kids have their own. I have done it where we share one and we have like maybe two of them 
and I partner people up for it. Um, yeah, lots of just different ways to utilize it for your family, depending on your specific needs. I love that we can go deep into one topic instead of going broad into a bunch of different ones. Yes, there is some fun element to that of getting to learn about new things. But like I said, each chapter, each lesson kind of works on a different category. So it's a little like a little micro unit study, but we're still going deep into the topic of flying creatures. My kids really retain a lot more of this than you would imagine. Even my little ones, uh, six and seven years old, really get a lot out of this material. And I'm really excited about this year. If you want to learn more about some of the other Apologia curriculums out there or see into Apologia Zoology 2 and what kind of fun experiments we did and things like that, be sure to check out this video here.